Hey everyone, it's Alondia Hammond here, affectionately known as Sue Ham, and I'm here, right, on the set of the Talking with Sue Ham show. And I wanted to catch up with attorney, as well as Representative Mr. Ronnie Sab, to sit here and ask him the questions that many of you have been beating down my door with. So I figured, who better to get the truth from than the person himself, correct? So today, guys, my guest on the Talking with Sue Ham show is none other than Mr. Ronnie Sapp, and we are going to ask him the questions that are really at the heart of the matter. So, Mr. Ronnie Sapp, welcome. So glad to be here with you. Thank you. Good to be here. You're such a hard man to catch up with. Well, uh, things have been a wee bit busy and hectic. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, before we get into the questions, what I'd like for you to do is just take two minutes and tell our uh, viewing audience exactly who you are. Uh, well, we believe we're the same uh, young man that uh, was born and reared uh, uh, 55 years ago in Greeleyville, South Carolina at the hands of a midwife. And uh, uh, through the grace of God, uh, was able to uh, grow up uh, in a home where we had a skylight before skylights became popular. That's the tin roofs that had the, the holes in it. And then we had the wooden floors where you could tell whether or not there were uh, hens or roosters underneath the uh, floor, not because they cackled, uh, but because uh, they um, could be seen uh, through the cracks uh, in the floors. And so we grew up uh, there uh, and being mentored uh, by Dr. Charles Edward Murray, who taught us things like people do according to their understanding, that a man is only as good as his information, that we can uh, ill afford to do uh, too many inferior things because that's what some have come to expect of us. And so we were fortunate enough to graduate from C.E. Murray in 1976 to attend Voorhees College, major in math, um, minor in business administration. Uh, graduated and came home. I uh, was unable to find a job. Um, and it was interesting because when we look back over our lives, the idea of having been uh, vice president of the Student Government Association, uh, boss list of our fraternity chapter, we were satisfied that we had leadership abilities and something to offer society and to not be able to find a job. Uh, was disheartening. Uh, we ended up following the dream of our grandmother, uh, moving to Miami, Florida. Our first job was as a stock boy, uh, earning minimum wage with a bachelor's degree. Uh, there again, another humbling experience, but you got to start somewhere. And so we continued to, to pray and, and through the help of others, ended up working at a hospital, um, working uh, as a basketball coach and, and, uh, and a teacher. Um, and, and just quickly, I uh, just want you to know that we worked two full-time jobs. Uh, one, we saved our salary. Uh, the other, we spent, uh, and we ended up uh, going to law school and being able to pay for it. Thank you so much for doing that because there may be some people that still are not familiar with who you are. Now, I have to say, in you saying who you are, I really felt the passion in that, and especially the part about, you know, disheartening, not being able to find a job. So with that being the case, and you being in the House of Representatives, what is it, four years now? Yes. Four years, okay. Yes. My question to you is, and it's coming from the general public at large, why now are you running for office? Why not in 2012? Why didn't you run for Senate for District 32 then? What's different from 2012 uh, to now? Quite simply, uh, in 2012, uh, the Senate was not on my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, my focus was on assessing uh, my first term and seeing how effective I've been in the House of Representatives uh, coming back home getting some feedback from uh, my constituents on on how they believe we perform that is our voting record uh, the kinds of legislation that we were a part of uh, them talking to other members of the house to see how their house member is doing them observing us uh, on ETV mm -hmm. uh, as we take the floor to advocate one position or another as it relates to the bills that we feel passionate about. And so our focus was simply on examining how well we were doing uh, and looking forward to our second term because, as you know, we didn't have any opposition uh, for our second term. Well, thank you so much for clearing that up because I have to tell you, many people are wondering why now. And so I think you clearly addressed that. It just simply was not your focus at that time. Absolutely. At that time. And now you would say that this is a better time because you have forged relationships to be able to help the oh, that, district at large? That, there's no question. We have measured uh, what we've been mm -hmm. able to achieve. And what we're satisfied about is that we've got the respect uh, and we've established the right kind of relationships and rapport with our colleagues such that uh, if you were to ask, 
Uh, I believe any member of the legislative body, mm -hmm. uh, whether they are in the House of Representatives or whether they are in the Senate, um, who is Ronnie Saab and what kind of legislator is he? Uh, we believe the responses would be favorable. Uh, because they've watched us perform, because they have had the opportunity to engage in, with us on important issues that affect the state of South Carolina, when we start receiving uh, grades, if you will, uh, from folks in the business community that say that we are a part of promoting uh, business-friendly legislation, then we know that our focus is real because economic development continues to be a critical issue in all of our districts. Uh, and so when we were voted um, uh, uh, to the uh, South Carolina House of Representative Ethics Committee, Unanimously, unanimously. Yeah. By, by both bodies, we knew uh, that we had achieved the kind of respect uh, that we needed to achieve in order to be able to become an effective legislator. And so we're simply ready uh, for this moment in time. Okay, our next question that uh, are on the minds of the population out there is, are you responsible for the high electrical bills? I mean, you, you, have, you have had to have heard that, right? That's out there. People really think that you're the man that's responsible for these high electrical bills. Uh, thank you, thank you uh, uh, Sue, for the question. Um, I am absolutely not responsible for um, the cost of power being what it is. Uh, I promise you my electric bill is high just like everyone <laughs> else's. Um, and here's the truth. If I had the power, Mm -hmm. uh, to do anything within my means to lower the electric bills, I would absolutely uh, do it, and I wouldn't do it today. I would have done it whenever the power came my way. And you know what's interesting about it is I heard that during the debate, and I really believe the source of the information knows better. Um, and and I, I just don't want to go that route if that's what others want to do. They want to put out that kind of false information to give that kind of false impression. Uh, so that folks would look at me another way, uh, then I just ask folks to please, ma'ams and sirs, you just use a reasonable uh, bit of intelligence and ask yourself the question as to whether or not a lawyer that represents an institution uh, has the power in any way uh, to just control the cost of power and how that institution does business. It simply doesn't work that way, uh, but again, I believe the source of the information really knows better. Uh, but we need to focus on the issues. There are great issues out there, and that's where the focus of this campaign really needs to be. Well, thank you so much for addressing that, because people really need to know the truth. And that is the reason why I do these type of shows, is because I like to go to the source, get you on record. And uh, Ronnie's right. We need to do our due diligence and seek out the truth. Do not just believe something just because you heard it. Do your due diligence. And you're right, it is important to find out the issues at hand, but I think it's also more important to find out what have you done since you've been in Columbia as a representative? Responsibility of a member of the House of Representatives. Number one, you got to go to work every day. Yes. Uh, and when you're there, um, you need to have done your homework prior to getting there um, because there are bills that come up every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, bills that fundamentally affect the lives of our constituents throughout the state of South Carolina. Now you mentioned bills, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm interrupting, you mentioned bills. What particular bills have you introduced or have you worked with to help uh, citizens in Senate D District 32? It's almost too many to mention. Oh wow. Uh, but just understand if you will, and we've created a link on our website that directs folks who are interested in it. But what you'll find if you go there is that we've been a part of sponsoring legislation that protects the elderly, mm -hmm. uh, legislation that protects that sensitive information that we have, your social security uh, uh, information, my social security information, to prevent the kind of breach that occurred before, uh, legislation that's designed to protect children, uh, that will give veterans um, uh, a little help, if you will, uh, because when our men and women go off to war, and they come back home, sometimes they have difficulties readjusting to our environment. And so we're pleased to have been a part of that legislation that just tells employers, uh, please consider them in a special way because of the kind of special sacrifices that they uh, are uh, giving uh, so that you and I uh, can live in a free country. Uh, and so uh, there is a record mm -hmm. uh, that relates to the kind of, of, of legislation that we've uh, proposed. 
Uh, in addition to that, there's a record as it relates to our voting. Uh, I mean, every once in a while in Colombia, folks sort of, in my view, get off track. And so then we've got the issue, for instance, of legalizing marijuana. Uh, many of us are opposed to legalizing marijuana. But when you have a marijuana extract mm -hmm. that can be used to prevent seizures mm -hmm. uh, that our young children are experiencing, and I mean the, uh, the, the data and the research um, uh, is clear uh, that it's a benefit. And so can we get hooked up on the notion of whether or not our state's going in the direction of legalizing marijuana and not uh, provide the kind of, uh, of medicine, if you will, that helps our children know and so we've got to have folks in Colombia who understand issues, uh, can articulate them clearly, and so we've been able to do that. And so um, I think that our record really kind of speaks you know, for itself on the for issue. your efforts in Colombia. Um, one, because I have a mother who's entering to that senior citizen stage, so it's very important to me that we do have laws in, in the House that are catered towards our senior citizens because we do know that in District 32, a lot of... Um, the population is becoming elderly. So right. I thank you for that. And I know that you've always been out in the public and helping uh, the elderly, uh, like vital aging. I appreciate that. Uh, Sue, if I could just interrupt. Yeah. You know, one of the things that occurred this past year was the governor vetoed mm -hmm. uh, the $2 million that we had put in the budget for our elderly population. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we did was make sure that that uh, veto was overridden. Uh, and so when AARP uh, A.B. Wilson and, and that group comes yeah. up to Columbia every year. What they do is they come to our office mm -hmm. and we sit down and we talk about those issues that are important to our seniors and just ask our seniors uh, that come to Columbia where we've stood with them every single time. And so these letters that we receive in the mail uh -huh. saying thank you for what we do is because we are actually doing that which they believe is in their best interest. Well, you are. And I salute you on that front. I salute you as a veteran myself for the work that you are doing for veterans. And I salute you for the children because I have children that I want to keep in Williamsburg County uh, to live here and to have jobs. So I just salute you on all fronts and thank you so much for your effort. Well, and you know, uh, we've removed that impediment uh, where children who um, uh, graduated from high school mm -hmm. uh, with certificates rather than diplomas having met all of the appropriate criteria to receive a diploma but didn't pass the exit exam. That is no longer the law in the state of South Carolina. Now all they have to do is go and apply, mm -hmm. and that stigma can be removed from uh, their records forever, and they will be awarded the diploma that they deserve. That's the kind of thing we can promote in the legislat legislature, and that's the kind of thing we've been a part of. And the importance of that is that people will be able to find jobs Absolutely. and be able to get into college. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. That, that is just outstanding. What I want to lead into now is Winsburg Technical College. Yeah. How do you plan yeah. to help you know, with that college, taking it to the next level? Yeah. One of the things that we uh, told Dr. Lee when she came on board, as we told Dr. McGinnis, mm -hmm. uh, the technical institution is vitally important. Uh, to our ability to grow our economy in, in Williamsburg County. And we're pleased uh, that um, there was a newspaper article a couple of months back uh, mm -hmm. that indicated that the money was in the budget uh, to add an additional wing to Williamsburg Technical College that will make it a job readiness center. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely huge yes. uh, for um, us and being attractive to uh, business and energy. I maintain, and I've shared with some, that Boeing would not be in Charleston, South Carolina, but for Trident Tech. And the things that Trident Tech is able to provide for Boeing, we can do the same thing. Uh, we send a clear signal uh, to uh, those who are looking for a place to locate that Williamsburg County is doing what is necessary to become attractive and competitive. And so uh, we are ac absolutely looking forward to breaking ground on, on that uh, uh, building. Well, I'm looking forward to it, too, and I can speak for my viewer and audience and say that I know they are looking forward to it. Now, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this interview, and I think it may be the most important question of the day. Why, Mr. Sapp, should I vote for you? Should the viewing audience vote for you? Why should we put our trust in you? I mean, are you really the one who's going to take us to that next level? Briefly, I just want you to look into the camera and tell the viewing audience, why is it that they should vote for you? Well, um, you should only trust me 
uh, if my record uh, suggests that I am worthy of your trust. I believe when you look at the fact that we came back home back in 1987, and the first thing we did was challenge ourselves in terms of what is it that we can do to help and serve our community. The first thing we offered for was the uh, Williamsburg County School Board of Trustees. And the citizens of this district responded, and I was elected. Uh, we served honorably in that position. We did not betray any trust. Then we became your assistant solicitor. We served for 20 years prior to going to the South Carolina House of Representatives. We served honorably, and so we believe that that kind of service earns your respect. Uh, we didn't get into the Voorhees College Hall of Fame. Uh, just because of our name. We got into the Hall of Fame because they looked at our level of service and were satisfied that we were worthy of that kind of recognition. We were not recognized by the United Negro College Fund just because we graduated. We were recognized because of the things that we've done since we've graduated. And so we simply say that when you look at our record of service, you find that we are worthy of the citizens' trust. Now the next question is whether or not we're in the position to lead, and we are. We are because of the things that we've done, and in addition to that, we are because we understand what it is we need. We know that we've got to fundamentally change what our aspirations are. We've got to do the kinds of things that are necessary in order to press forward uh, economically and socially. And so we're focused on the kind of infrastructural change that's going to put us in a position to attract jobs. We're focused on the kind of infrastructure changes that are going to promote that which is good in our area. We have certain uh, gifts, if you will, uh, and we have certain jewels that have been given to us by God. The question is how will we utilize them in order that we might receive that which he has for us. And so when we look at education and where we were a year ago and how we're racing to the top now, that's positive. When you look at Williamsburg Technical College and it becoming a job readiness center, that's positive. Uh, when you look at our hospital and the people that are now on the board, I'm anxious to get Dr. Uh, uh, Yvonne Jefferson Barnes on that board as well because it's the board that speaks volumes for where our commitment lies. And I'm grateful to those persons for being willing to serve and I'm honored to be given the power in order to uh, uh, nominate them. And, and so then when you look at the idea of, of the school district uh, and the race to the top efforts, here's what we reflect on. We reflect on the fact that years ago, uh, back in 2001, when we began to start offering scholarships that we believed then as we do now, that education is our best weapon against poverty. And so we've enjoyed the opportunity of providing that, uh, that we have. We understand that to whom much is given much is required and so we've simply tried to share those gifts uh, that God has sent uh, our way. The other thing is when we look at the plight of, of males in general and African American males in particular, the question is what is it will we do with our time? When you look at our record you will find that we have been involved uh, in basketball for the past uh, 15, 15 of the past 20 years. Why? Not only because we love the sport, because we know that that brings us into contact with our males and, and it's not only about teaching basketball skills, it's about teaching life skills. And so we think when you fully examine us as a candidate, we're worthy of your trust. We believe we're worthy of your vote. Here's what I'd like to leave you with. We don't believe that any man is an island. We believe that if you adopt the notion of I, 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 me, 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 you will simply see, see, see. We think that if we're running by ourselves, we can run faster. But if we're running together with others, we can go farther. It is our intention to go farther. And so we believe that together uh, we can. We believe that together we can rise above our valleys. We believe that together we can exceed our individual reach. And together we can visualize beyond our dreams. And so we're simply asking to examine us from the point of trust, Examine us from the point of leadership, not because we say it, but because we've been about the business of it. Examine us in terms of whether or not we are bringing people together or whether or not we are pushing them apart. Folks, I simply say this is an important historical moment for us. We believe that we're the one uh, for the position, and with your help, we'll get there. Thank you all so much, and thank you, Sue, for this opportunity to share with you. Thank you so much. I so heartfelt. I, I had goosebumps the whole time that you were speaking. So thank you so much for taking the time to come on this show and address the issues, address the concerns 
of the public. And one thing I can say, you've always been out there in the public, at the forefront, and I just want to personally thank you for all that you do in the community, all that you do in Columbia. Now, before we get off the show, I have to let the people know, can they go somewhere and vote early, or do they have to wait until September 2nd? to cast their vote? Yes, no, they can vote now, especially those seniors that are 65 years uh, of age or older. And there are a number of other reasons. If you're going to be out of town, okay. if you have doctor's appointment, all of those kinds of things, you can vote early. Uh, and you need to go to the voter's registration that's actually right across the street in Courthouse Square. OK, OK, awesome, awesome. Now, how do we get in contact with you if we have any questions, if we need a ride to the polls, if we uh, need yard signs, whatever it is, how do we reach you? Uh, everything is located that you need right here at Campaign Central, uh, which is 114 uh, North Main Street. Um, there's a phone number, 843-355-5350. Uh, <laughs> uh, we uh, have a uh, website. Um, we have an email. Um, the email is uh, uh, saffersenate at gmail.com. Our website, SAF for Senate. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Ronnie Sab. Uh, and so uh, we are here to communicate with those who uh, need information. And so please, ma'ams and sirs, just, uh, just ask and uh, we will certainly try to uh, respond. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy man, uh, not only busy with the campaign trail, but busy with being in Columbia as well as in the community. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you so much for taking the time to set the record straight on the Talking with Sue Ham show. I'm not going to hold you up and let you get back to doing what it is that you do. Any closing remarks before we end? Well, I just want to thank you uh, for this opportunity to be a part of your show. Uh, thank you for the manner in which you continue to be a servant leader in the community. I think that, uh, that being a servant leader uh, ought to be the goal of every citizen and to the extent that we take advantage of that like you're doing, uh, I think uh, you're worthy of applaud, and so we just want to applaud you for the things that you do. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Listen, I hope to see you around. Well, thanks. We'll remember, get out there September 2nd or earlier and cast your vote.